Christ has again purified the spirit of the mind of the passion and the people's disciple grows in the United States and grows towards the world of the world. I agree that we need more space, but I'm going to add more when we say we need more accessibility to it. Uh, and especially in underserved communities, which is where I think we should be promoting the sport. Uh, that's why we need to be pushing and making sure that they have fields where they can play. Uh, I think it's going to take away, socially, it's going to take away from kids getting involved in trouble as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but they need to have access to the space. Um, not taking a step at any, but obviously charging for a field is not something that all the families can do. So there has to be some way of working out perhaps a day uh, out of the week or hours out of the day where they can open the field so the community and the underserved community can come and use the space. Yeah. You know, when we look at the, at the scheduling of for the parks, one of the ways that the parks have been in the community, they are built until next year, right? There's no space and access to no. So this, this business model of reserving space or participating, you know, how can you get other things in the room with the business that this week so that we need to really change the model of the community? Is there a balance between the business model of the family and the community and the community to provide a plan of training if kids are concerned and accessible? Now, what do you think about finding that balance between the cost for someone to pay to pay something and the infrastructure for something and accessibility? Where is the middle point? I would say that I'm going to go ahead. It's just something that we have to collectively figure out to do it. Um, I do think there should be a uh, playing space that is accessible to everybody, to no matter your income or whatever you do. The same way we have a basketball court, a basketball court could be, could be accessible to anybody. Um, and you can just walk in to the and so forth. Um, we don't have the same type of thing with soccer. We don't have this random soccer. But at the same time, I still think that having something like Soccer 5 is very important because there are people that want to throw maybe events or have games or have a league and so forth. And those are structures that you know, we need in terms of growing a sport and having, having that. So I, I think there, there has to be the perfect balance. Um, I think the idea is making sure that we have the same amount of, um, I guess, schools, whether it's pay to play or pay for just access, not as not pay, so um, pay for accessibility for people who just want to go out there and keep it around. I think we just have to have the same amount of each. Um, that would be my own suggestion. What about the kids who can't afford it? Families that can't afford it? How would you create more opportunities for sure? Um, I think, you know, with the community-based organizations that we have, we have more of them. The community-based organizations could set up certain programs within their program that are more geared towards those more you know, income situations. And I think we could work the current with CBOs as well. Um, I think more CBOs should have the opportunity to have a safer program for the more income situation. If you, if you now want to interject here, for yeah. instance, I'm thinking a good example of a small organization in North Miami that is doing extremely well. Yeah. We have this organization called Little Haiti Football Club, yeah. right? They are geared towards the red halves and they are doing an extremely wonderful job. Yeah. What, is, what are they doing? You know what? First of all, they're not charging. Okay? They're not charging. So the kids are free to go and play. But the kids Well, I think it's the place, absolutely. You know, the community is paying for it, the city is paying for it. And actually, what I would like to go, I'd like to revert back a little bit to what I was saying, so you understand my point. Because at the same token, I'm part of the Rush family. So I couldn't be promoting here, you know, not to pay and then be part of an organization that charges to pay, right? So it all depends on what the objective and the goal is as far as soccer. As far as soccer in America is concerned, right? Do we want to be a nation that aspires? Do, do we want to be a nation that aspires to go to the World Cup and be able to compete 
and then be able to reap the fruits of those benefits that come with the World Cup. Mm -hmm. Well, if that's the case, then the people play model is not going to help towards that. Why? Because as Alex was saying it, there are so many diamonds in the rough, right, that are hidden, right, that are not able to have the opportunity to play. And they are not able to add to the value of this quality play that we have because a lot of them are outstanding, but more talented than the people that we have, right? So that would be in this sense. But at the same time, as well, when you think about it, here in America, we are too sufficient in the sense that we like the business is so good, right? And when it's could succeed, and people are having the valuation that they have for the teams and still be able to generate the revenue that they're generating without having to be part of the World Cup. Look at what Qatar had to do right. so that they could be successful. So if I may be the Prime Minister of the U.S. Soccer Federation, no man here, and you have a budget, how would you do the model that you are explaining to have them in the political world? And then you have the accessibility. How would they score? How would they move the money around that trip, Mr. Prime Minister, to make this happen? First of all, I will bring experts like my friend I do, uh, um, uh, Thompson that's here, people that have the knowledge, it was just to say hello because I see a little crowd here, but it's the word that you used earlier, it's balance, mm. it's finding the right balance, right? And since I'm a little bit more on the European side, because I've lived in Europe, I was educated in Europe, and I'm crazy about the World Cup, right? I would tend to have a sensibility towards developing the game in a way that we can compete and we can compete and aspire to win that championship. But we are on our way towards that. You know, it sounds like you would hope it a little bit more than it is now. It is yes, absolutely. It's the balance. Again, as I say, it's the balance, right? It's trying to find a way to have big sponsors, big sponsorship, the community get involved much more trying to be able to provide as little Haiti football club is provided to the kids and as much as us as well at rush we're able to do because at the same token right we have a bunch of coaches that are benefiting from the revenues the other revenue that they have for what we can offer you know I'm so confused that they're allocating the responsibility so why don't we look what we have and why can we immediately develop? I will look also into the schools. The schools have a lot of land that most of the time they don't use. Why can we partner with the school department, build some soccer fields there for the school players, for the school soccer students to use as well? Create programs, that's the easy solution. You are providing a spot right in schools where parents don't need to drive. You develop players with good staffing, and those that need to go to a separate level, those are the ones continue maybe in the program that is with coaching staff and is a more okay, a professional coaches like that. But in community-based programs like where well, well, I run, we do have a lot of financial aid funds. So we separate a percentage of the income that we get from membership and we use that for financial aid. So we are getting five percent. So last season we used seventy five thousand dollars. Now we provided in players that did not have the income. Well but that's what I felt best. I felt best that I was able to help a family in the that they have a good soccer education. And, and that made me very proud. Very few people have this gift. Nuka here, everyone wants to say exactly what it is. Oh, no. And then we also have a very special prize from the, the Greater Miami Convention of Visitors of Europe. It's a VIP pass to certain attractions here in Miami so that you can go and see and be inspired and believe a little bit more. So make sure you hold on to this. This is like precious cargo, right? <laughs> it's um, basically when we launched the, the hosting here in Miami, um, very few people received this, so I want to give this to you as someone who's And before you go, Luca, 
Can I walk over there to the Nymphopad? I'll just show you, come on out. I'm not even gonna rap for this patch, okay? You, you, you already did my job for me. This is for you, John. Excellent, you wanna take a picture with?